Well, if it wasn't for animal experimentation, obviously we're not going to have a lot of the medical treatments that we have today, like polio vaccine or any number of other things that only could ever have actually been discovered through some animal experimentation, as much as we might not like that. Nobody really likes animal experimentation, but in order for the advancement of the medical profession and finding cures for diseases and so forth, I would think that it's pretty essential to test on animals, as much as I hate saying that, but ultimately if it came down to my dog or my child, then unfortunately I would take my child over my dog and that's just the way it is. And I think it's important that we have research using animals so that we can stop, say, future um, diseases like polio from happening again in the, in the 21st century. So we need a more systematic way to try and evaluate uh, how useful animal experiments really are in contributing to human healthcare advancements. So where then does the truth lie? How predictive are animals for human patients and how much uh, does animal experimentation really contribute to the advancement of human healthcare overall? In 2004, uh, researchers from three British universities and Yale University noted in the British Medical Journal that clinicians and the public often consider it axiomatic or fundamental that animal research has contributed to um, human healthcare advancements, but only on the basis of anecdotes or unsupported claims. These constitute an inadequate form of evidence uh, they asserted for such a controversial area of research, particularly given increasing competition for scarce research resources. And so they called for more formal evaluation of animal research, for example via systematic reviews. Now systematic reviews are considered to provide gold standard evidence about a wide variety of clinical or research questions, including those that investigate the contributions of animal experiments to human healthcare advancements. They're considered to provide the highest level of reliability about uh, research questions for several reasons. Firstly, they aim to ensure that no relevant uh, important evidence, uh, such as uh, published animal experiments in this case, no important evidence is missed and they do this by checking multiple biomedical bibliographic database, so that's databases containing the scientific literature. So they do an exhaustive search and they in, tend to end up with very large numbers of published animal experiments, sometimes more than a thousand in some of these systematic reviews. Secondly, if they um, select any subsets of these uh, large numbers for closer examination, they must use randomization or similarly impartial and methodical means to eliminate any bias in the selection of cases. And finally, the entire study is done with sufficient impartiality and rigour uh, to successfully achieve publication in a peer-reviewed biomedical journal, and that's a systematic review. In the last decade, I've been uh, analysing and studying these systematic reviews and even conducting a few of my own, and these have formed the basis for my doctorate in this field and also my recent book on animal experimentation. There are at least 27 systematic reviews which have provided important insights into the level of contributions of uh, animal experiments for human healthcare advancements. In only two of 20 cases uh, did the conclusions of the authors indicate that animal experiments were significantly useful in contributing to the uh, uh, development of clinical interventions that are actually uh, effective in human patients or substantially consistent with human outcomes. And one of those two cases was contentious because there was a small sample size. 